be in Barrington, at the Barrington Church, got on back Barrington Road. That's actually in Somerville. Uh, we start at 6 o'clock tonight. Revival Monday through Wednesday will start at 7 o'clock, but you're not allowed to come Wednesday because you have church here. And I encourage you to be part of your local church. But we're all, local church tonight is actually in Barrington. I want to preach today the fourth sermon in our New Year series in press. Everybody say press. Press. I have preached on the theme of press, talked about the first week, I gave you an overall generic, I don't want to use the word generic, an overall just introduction to the lesson. And then uh, I, last two weeks ago I preached on prayer, the importance of prayer. Last week I preached on repentance, and today I want to preach on expect, expect. Our text has been for this series, Philippians chapter 3, if you want to flip there with me. <coughs> Verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind, I reach forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if, if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even unto you. Flip over now to the book of Ephesians chapter 3 for today's text. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. That's a big God, isn't it? Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much that I have an opportunity to worship with this great congregation. And Jesus, I'm just so thankful that you put us all together. And I know, God, you've got great works for us. I know that you're going to do awesome things in the Rise and Fall Church. And I surrender myself to you. And I pray, God, that you'd make me usable this morning to preach this gospel. I ask you, Father, to give me a divine word from heaven, an anointing that will convict, an anointing that will encourage, an anointing that will draw us. I pray, Jesus, that you would begin to help us to refocus on you. I pray that our eyes, our hearts, our hopes, and our visions, and our dreams will all be focused on you. I love you, Jesus. Have your way in this morning, in this service. Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 The law of expectations say that basically we get out of life what we expect to get out of life. We tend to see what we expect to see. We tend to feel what we expect to feel. We tend to act the way we expect to act. And eventually we tend to achieve what we expect to achieve. Your expectations influence your happiness. They influence your relationships. They will influence your health. Your expectations influence every part of your life. So it's very important that you begin to expect bigger things than what you're expecting. Matthew chapter 9 verse 28. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said to him, Oh, yea, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith... Be it unto you. Yes. According to your expectation, yes. be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Now listen, there are two approaches to life, and you get to choose. Two roads you get to travel in life, and it's your choice. Nobody's going to force you. You can live by faith, yes. or you can live by fear. It's totally up to you. You can be an optimist, or you can be a pessimist. It's totally up to you, out of faith or out of fear. Job sometimes was a pessimist. Job chapter 3, verse 25, Job says, Everything I've ever feared and ever dreaded has come true. Yeah, we've all met people like that, right? Oh, I knew it was going to happen. I knew the word, my tree was going to fall. I knew my house was going to cave in. I just knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. I always knew badness, you know. Oh, I knew the sun was going to come up and it was going to be too bright. I knew the sun was going to go down and it was going to be too dark. Oh, I knew it was going to be bad. You know what I mean? It's always so negative and always so bad. Paul, on the other hand, was, was not... A negative person. He was pretty much an, op an optimist. Philippians chapter 1 verse 20. Paul says, I live in eager expectations. While I'm going through all these trials. I'm living in an eager expectations. So let me add this word. Even though I'm going through trials in my life. I have an eager hope in the God that I serve. Amen. When you expect the best, you're honoring God. 
Yes. I'm going to say that again. When you expect the best, you're honoring God. Yes. And it increases your ability when you begin to expect the best. When you're expecting the best in your life, the ability that for you to achieve the best automatically goes up. Amen. Think about David and Goliath. He took the stones. It was time for him to fight. He took the five smooth stones from the from from the from the little brook of water. And, and everybody else says, man, they're scared. All the other soldiers, all the other leaders, they're cowering and going, oh, the giant's too big. We'll never beat him. The giant's too big. And David took five smooth stones and said, that giant's so big, I can't miss him. Amen. He had a different expectation. He knew that he was serving the God much bigger Amen. than the giant that he was facing. Yes. You need to know that when you begin to expect God to be God, that is a contagious attitude. Woo! When you come to wow. church and you're expecting God to show up, right. you come to church and you're wow. expecting a miracle, you come to church, you're expecting wow. deliverance. All of a sudden, that expectation begins to flow. Yes. That positive yes. energy begins yes. to flow throughout right. the church. Right. When a pastor comes before you and they're automatically negative and they're automatically, oh, we'll never be anything and we'll never go anywhere and we'll never grow because look where we're at. We're stuck next to a train track. Our walls are cracking. Our roofs are leaking. Oh, we're never going to be anything. Guess what happens? The whole church begins to believe they're never going to be anything. But if somebody comes in going, I know my God can do yeah. all things. There's nothing impossible. expect God to be God. Amen. Amen. I know we live in a world where everything is negative. All the TVs and the, the news. I don't even know if you can read newspapers anymore, but kids, those are things that get black stuff all over your head. They, they print, they fold them, and they fold them. They used to put them in your mailbox, and people used to ride bicycles and throw them in your yard. But gone are the days of those type of newspaper men. But anyway, everything is negative. Yes. I've tossed a lot of newspapers and got a lot of people mad. I, I ride my bike from one yard. I wouldn't get back on the street. Why well, get in the street? But well, I can ride through the yards. And I'd ride through the yards and people call the newspaper people. Hey, he's riding through my yard again. Well, yeah, I'm trying to chunk your newspaper to you. But anyway, that's another story. I started delivering newspapers when I was uh, probably about 13 years old. But anyway, the thing is, everything around us is negative. Everything around us seems to be negative except for the God that we serve. And God says the earth will be covered with knowledge and the Lord as the waters cover the seas. You need to understand the God that you serve knows how the ending happens. I know we're living in a, in a negative time and you can watch prophetic teachings and you can watch prophetic signs and you can either go, Ooh, thank God Jesus is about to come or you can go, oh my God, the world's coming to an end. It's all based on what you expect. How are you viewing the eye, through your eyes of faith? Yes. What do you expect? Are you living your life controlled by low expectations? Is your faith so small that you can't even see over the anthill that's in front of you? Because you have such low expectations. Listen, if we're going to press into a new season of refreshing, if we're going to press into a season of authentic revival, then we must begin to, and we're going to refocus on God. You have got to expect God to right. be big. Amen. We are. We got to stop thinking so small. Stop allowing our vision to be so tunneled. God is a big God. Expect God to do great, awesome works. God is an all-knowing God. Yes. All powerful God, all seeing God, all hearing God, all present God. Let us let God be the big God that He is. Amen. Expect God to be God. Yes. I really believe here's a problem. We see Jesus, a man. Jesus, a man that loved and taught and healed. Jesus, a man that died on the cross. Jesus, a man that came out of the tomb. Jesus, a man that walked the earth 40 days after his resurrection and taught his disciples. Jesus, a man that was caught up into the clouds. So we define Jesus in our minds as a man. And we limit to who Jesus was on the earth because we're going, oh, well, he's just a man. So all of our thoughts and all of our patterns are centered around a man. But you have to remember, Jesus was not just a man. He was all man, but he was also all God. Amen. So you have to quit allowing the expectations to be grounded in what men think and what men say and what the world is teaching you. We serve a big God. Yes. Allow him to be big. Yes. Matthew chapter 9, verse 26. And Jesus said to them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Yes. Your situation seems impossible today only because you're judging it with the eyes of men. Yes. Amen. 
Did you hear what I said? Whatever your situation is right now, it seems impossible because you're allowing your faith to be influenced by the ideas and teachings of men. In other words, let me say it this way. Your situation is impossible because the world tells you it's impossible. Because the Word does not tell you it's impossible. The Word says with men it's impossible, but with me nothing is impossible. All things, all things, all things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, expecting, you shall receive. In other words, God says it may be impossible with men, but not with me. You're serving a God that's big enough no matter what your condition is, God is still able. The world is telling you He's not. The world is telling you you're in a situation you can't get out of. The world is telling you you're in a sickness you'll never be healed of. The world is telling you you're bound by a financial bondage. You'll never be debt free. But the God is saying, He is saying a whole different thing. Your expectations have been too low. Get your eyes off the turkeys and look to the eagles. God is a big God. Can you give a praise in this time? What do you expect? Do you expect to fail? Do you expect to be defeated? Do you expect to lose your family? Do you expect to be fired from another job? Do you expect to be back in addiction? Too many times your expectations are grounded in your past failures. Yes, amen. Ooh, I wish I had a little time. All I do, I have a microphone. Listen. <laughs> You have to understand, many of you expect low things because of the past failures of your life. Yes. Yes. And the past patterns of your life. Well, my daddy was like this and my grandfather was like this, so I'm going to be like this too. And you continue to live this awful low expectation in your life because you'll never be good enough. Your daddy was never good enough. They were always on the other side of the tracks. You'll always be on the other side of the track. They've always had marriage problems. You'll always have marriage problems. They've always had financial problems. You'll always have financial problems. Problems. They've always been hated. You'll always be hated. And you begin to allow the expectations of what used to be. Your past failures, your past defeats, your past agonies, your past trials have always defined. But listen, it's time that you quit worrying about what was yesterday because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Expect God to break that plague off of your family. Expect God to break those plagues off of your children. Stop expecting defeat. Stop expecting failure. You are a child of the yes. living king, the king of kings of all kings. expect that curse to be lifted from your children. You need to expect the best that's coming to your family. I'm not going to live in a season of drought. I'm going to live in a season of refreshing. I'm not going to be bound by the bondage of the world. I serve a God too big to be bound by the I'm going to be free in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm supposed to preach revival tonight, not this morning. Tonight I'm supposed to act like an evangelist. I'm supposed to be pastoral. Let me get back to my position. Get fired up. You need to understand the victory is coming to your life, but you've got to expect that. Some of you are looking at all of your enemies going, oh, I'll never be an overcomer. I'll never win. I'll never, I'll never. Quit talking like that and expect yeah. God. If you're going to ever press into revival, it's going to be because you expect God to show up and to show out. You expect God to take over. I believe in this year, 2014, we're going to have a season of authentic refreshing and authentic revival. You know what? I'm expecting God to hear my cry and show up on a Sunday morning, Sunday night and on a Wednesday night. And it's not going to last a week. It's going to last a while. Why? Because I know in whom I have believed and I've got faith that He hears and answers my cry. Amen. You need to look yourself in the mirror and quit telling yourself all the negatives about you. Quit finding all your flaws and all your faults. Quit looking in the mirror realizing that you're worthless and begin to see yourself as somebody loved by God. Somebody who's the apple of God's eye. Somebody called and chosen. A peculiar person. A holy person. A royal person. A right person. A person that is loved and cared for and nurtured by King Jesus. It's time you quit expecting defeat and you begin to live in victory. My Lord, help me. Psalm chapter 5, verse 3 says, Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I will bring my request yes. to you, and I will wait expectantly. Yes. That's the New Living Translation. God, I'm going to get up in the morning. 
I'm not going to complain because the sun is bright and shining in my window. Right. I'm not going to listen to the devil saying, it's going to be another horrible day. You're going to have another fight at work. It's yeah. going to be another bad day. I can already hear the children rumbling in the background. It's going to be a bad day. No, no, you're going to wake up going, oh God, I call on a God that hears yeah. my prayers. I call on a God yeah. that will answer me. I call on a God I want to walk yeah. in favor today. When I open the door to my office, I'm not walking into the territory of the enemy. But God has rolled out a red carpet. And I'm going to step into divine favor. I'm going to walk as a child of the king. I'm going to stand a little taller, spread my shoulders back and know in whom I have believed. I expect to walk in the divine favor of a God who's able to go with me. Amen. Amen. Some of you face every day as somebody, you got to find somebody you know. You're, you're going to be somebody who's walked on. You know why? Because you make yourself a rug. You expect it every morning. I'm going to get walked on again today. I'm going to get beat up again today. I'm going to be bullied again today. Stop living with those expectations. Amen. It's time you allow God to be God. Yes. Oh God, I re I'm going to pray this morning and I'm going to expect an answer. Yes, amen. Yes. When you enter into your closet and you shut the door and you begin to pray, you ought to pray with an earnest expectation. God, I'm not praying to a dead God. I'm not praying to Buddha. I'm not praying to Muhammad. I don't have to go give a special offering and rub a special belly and light a special candle. But God, I'm coming on a God whose ears are always open, whose hands are always outstretched. And God, I know that you love me. I know that you called me. And I expect, God, I'm going to lay it out, God. I'm going to expect you to handle this situation. Yeah. I'm going to expect you to handle this situation and get me out of this mess. Oh, God, yeah. you're a God that's able. Yes, amen. Yes. Amen. Expect God to be God in your life and expect God to be big. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, for we know that all things, and I love this verse, yeah. we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to God. His purpose. Yes. yes. <laughs> It doesn't say everything is always good. But it says everything works out for good. Yes. Go ahead and brace yourself. You're going to have trials. You're going to have temptations. Amen. You're going to have circumstances. But every time I go through a circumstance that's hard, every time I face a disappointment, every time I face an enemy, I'm going to expect to be an overcomer. Amen. I'm going to expect to be a conqueror. I'm going to expect to be victorious. I'm not going to ever expect to be defeated because I am a child of God. Amen. 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 I'm going through a battle right now, but I'm coming out a victorious right. soldier of Christ. Amen. I may be having a hard time with my family, but I'm expecting God to make this Amen. mess clear up. Yeah. I'm going through a time of poverty, but one day I expect to have more than enough. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going through a major problem, but it's not going to kill me. It's going to make me stronger. Right. I'm going to walk closer to God than I've ever walked. Yeah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the yeah. shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Yeah. Your rod and thy staff, they comfort me. My Lord, he makes a way he prepares a table in the presence of my yes, enemies. God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my yes, life. God. I will worship a God. I will expect that shepherd to guide this yes, sheep in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. I know that in the end all things work to my good. Amen. Yes. Let's look at another chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Think about that now. We have been messed up, beaten up. We have been despised. We despaired even of life. We're so close to the brink of giving up, so close to the brink of death. Listen to verse 9. We had the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves. Let me stop there. We have a death sentence into the situation. We look at ourselves and we cannot trust what's on the inside. We cannot trust ourselves. We cannot trust anything about us. We cannot trust we're going to make the right decision. We cannot trust we're going to live. But we know that we have to trust in a God which yes. raiseth the dead. Yes. Amen. Amen. Boy, isn't it awesome when you get to a place in life, you know you can't expect you to do nothing, but you can't expect yes. the power of the resurrection to show up. Yes. Yes. I'm going to trust in a God that raises the dead who delivered us. Lord, help us. 
from such a great death and death deliver and whom we will trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us for the gift and bestowed upon us by the means of many persons. Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Yes. You need to know something. You may have a death sentence, but I'm going to expect the power of the resurrection to come Amen. through in my situation. I may be in the middle of a trial, but I'm expecting to be raised. I may be dead and six foot under, but I still expect the power of the resurrection. I might not see hope. I might not see help. I might not see the light of day, but I know in my spirit in whom I have believed and I will keep my faith and my trust and I will expect that big old God to help me out of this grave. If he can raise a man who died on the cross out of the grave, he can raise me. And it's that same spirit that raised Jesus up that's going to take this body home. Stop talking yourself into despair. Stop talking yourself into agony. And let Jesus Christ be who He is in your life. I'm telling you, if we're going to press into a new thing in Rising Fawn, it has to be because you expect God Amen. to do great things. Yes. Yes. Quit allowing death to be spoken over you and begin to speak life into your situations. Some of the, the power of death and life is what? In the power of your tongue. Yes. Quit speaking death into your family. Quit speaking death into your children. Quit speaking death into your situation. And begin to speak through the power of resurrection. Expect God to show up in your life. Amen. It's like that little old lady. Oh, my Lord, I'm going to run over today. Go ahead and brace yourself, all right? But I let you out 10 minutes one Wednesday night. I told you I was going to get them back. And today's the day. And let me tell you something. Here's what you have to understand. It's like that little old lady. There's a mountain in between her and, 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 and the city. And she says, I'm going to pray that God moves that mountain. I, need, I can't go around the mountain anymore. I need to have a straight shot. I'm getting old. and I'm like Sister Penny. I can't drive down the mountain very good. So I have to run it off the side of it. But God kept her safe, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Now she's got a show for so, so God works everything out. Here's what you have to understand. She says, I'm going to go to my prayer closet. The Bible says, if I have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I can say to this mountain, be removed, and it will be cast into the sea. She knelt by her bed. Oh, God, I say to this mountain, be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe. And she began to call and she began to claim scripture. She'd go to her window and it'd still be there. She'd go back and pray and pray and it'd still be there. And finally about a week of praying and the mountain's still there. She's like, I knew God wouldn't move that mountain. Mm. So the truth really came out in the yes. end. Amen. You see, it's one thing to blabber a bunch of stuff and it's another thing to live something. Right. Amen. Amen. You've got to expect God and have faith in a God that is able. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 54. I kind of wish I'd have saved this scripture and preached it all by itself. Because this is some good stuff right here. This is the new century version. The Lord says, Sing, Jerusalem. You are like a woman who never gave birth to children. Start singing and shout for joy. You never felt the pain of giving birth, but... You will have more children than the woman who has a husband. Make your tent bigger. Stretch it out. Make it wider. Do not hold back. Make the ropes longer and its stakes stronger. Yes. Because you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your children will take over the nations. They will again live in cities that once were destroyed. Verse 4, don't be afraid because you will not be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed because you will not be disgraced. You will not forget the shame. You, f you will forget the shame you felt earlier. You will not remember the shame you, will f you felt when you lost your husband. The God who made you is like your husband. His name is the Lord All-Powerful. The Holy One of Israel is the one who saves you. He is called the God of all the earth. You are like a woman whose husband left her and you were very sad. You were like a wife who married young and then her husband left her. But the Lord called you to be His, says your God. God says, I left you for a short time, but with great kindness I will bring you back again. I became very angry and hid from you for a time, but I will show you mercy and kindness forever, saith the Lord. I'm sorry, me and the clicker got away from each other. I became very angry. I hid from you for a time, but I will show mercy 
it with <laughs> kindness forever, saith the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, amen. Thank you need to circle that in your Bible. Read it again because here's, let me run this down real quick. With the right expectations, you better start preparing. Begin right now, even though you are, are, are husbandless spiritually, we'll say. Even though it, everything's not working out, begin to sing songs of praise and not songs of mourning. Right. In other words, let your prayer time not be filled with defeat, but filled with expectations yeah. that God is alive. Yeah. Make your tents bigger. Stretch it out and make the ropes longer. That's why we got a piece of land down there waiting on the money to come in because we're going to stretch our tents and stretch our ropes. We're going to make the stakes stronger. Why, Brother Chris? we building a church with 350 seats because we're expecting 350 right. people to come. Amen. Amen. I have four people say amen. <laughs> I'm preaching on expectation. Right. The reason I'm building a church for 350 people because I'm expecting 350 amen. people to come. Amen. God to do something in a little community that most people don't even know about greater than anything else. Why? Because the people humble themselves under the mighty hand of God and in due time He shall exalt them. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's about our focus on King Jesus. It's about our focus on God. It's about our focus on His will. It's about our focus on His plan. But you better start preparing. Yes. And live your life with the expectations to make the tent a little bigger. Amen. You're about to spread out. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed anymore. You're not going to be disgraced. God is about to do some stuff in your life. But listen, you've got to forget the shame of your past. Amen. Forget the shame of your past. Don't be sad. God's going to be your husband. Amen. Somebody come play the piano. Thank Both of y'all are real close today. God's going to be your husband. God's going to show up with his kindness. Mm -hmm. You've got to change your expectations. Yes. You've got to change your expectations. Right. God loves you. Amen. 7 and 8 says this, and I'm sorry that me and the clicker got messed up. 7 and 8 says this, I left you for a while, and I've got angry for a while and hid my face from you, but I'm back. Right. Amen. Some of you need to realize, maybe you felt far away from God, but He's back. Right. In your life, you need to say, you know what? I, I've had some seasons of dry times and some seasons of cold times, but... God's back. Amen. He's going to be the Lord of my life. He's yes. going to be the king of my heart. He's going to be the husband to me. Even though I've not yet had my first child, I'm about to have more than those who are married. Amen. Even though I've not yet given birth to my first spiritual promise, I'm about to give birth to quadruplets. God's about to best bless me spiritually. I know that I was away from God, but God, I'm coming back. And God, you're going to be back. And I expect you this time, God, to be God in my life. What do you expect? What do you expect? First of all, let me say this. And you can stand with me. As you move into a season of refreshing, as you press yourself into a different expectation, you need to understand something. The only way in this room you'll walk into a season of revival is if you're right with God. Some of you heard this sermon and you're like, who I got to begin to expect greater things that, that you're not right with God. Are you in the right place with Jesus Christ? Are you saved? Have you run away from God and you need to come back? And you can go, God's back in my life. Then why don't you come this morning and surrender your life? I don't know where you are spiritually, but God does. And I know before I begin to talk about the other expectations, I want to ask you, are you living right? And if you're not, today's the day. Today's the day. Why don't you begin to expect God to, to touch you right now? God can bring you back into the fold. I know you've done a lot of bad stuff. But God will leave the 99 and He'll search for that one. He'll rescue them. He'll bandage them. He'll heal them. He'll bring them back into the fold. He'll nurture them until they're strong enough to stand on their own. Where are you? Are you with the fold, the family, the flock? Or have you wandered off all by yourself? If so, God's calling you to come home. God's inviting you to come back. I'm going to give you just a second to search your hearts. Are you in the right place with Jesus? Because it's time that you surrender everything.